Why Donald Rumsfeld? Why did you choose him to be your subject at this event? Things take on a logic of their own. I had made the fog of war about Robert S. McNamara, um, a, a central figure for me uh, as a young man uh, because of the war in Vietnam, uh, one of the great disasters in American history. Uh, and I made the movie because of questions about that war. Uh, how did we get into such an incredible mess. Um, 58,000 American soldiers dead, <clears throat> millions of people in Southeast Asia dead. Uh, call it the salt and pepper shakers where the book ends, but another disastrous war, another Secretary of Defense, and I decided that I wanted to do it again. Also, I'd made a movie about Abu Ghraib. So there are a whole number of uh, issues which are of great interest to me. But the interesting thing is McNamara was sort of the reluctant <laughs> warmonger, whereas Rumsfeld in your film is so certain about everything that he does. Uh, how did you first get him to agree to sit down, not just for an hour, two hours, for 30 three hours of interviews, uh, and to reveal so much uh, about his own thoughts to you? Uh, the simplest answer is because he wanted to. Uh, he wanted to explain himself. He wanted to provide an account of what he had done. Very early on, uh, our first meeting— Did he call you or you call him? I called him. I sent him a copy of The Fog of War and a letter. Uh, I was told by his lawyer, Bob Barnett, that he would never, ever, ever speak to me. He said, forget about it. This is never going to happen. But he did call me. I went to Washington. We met. And <coughs> this film is the result. In that trailer we just played, um, he talked about the possibility of having become president. How would that have happened? Could have happened in a whole number of different ways. Uh, he was extraordinarily successful at a very young age, uh, four-term congressman from Illinois, and then a whole number of cabinet-level appointments in the Nixon administration. He was the youngest secretary. Uh, Secretary of Defense in the history of the country. <laughs> uh, eventually, in the Ford administration, one of the youngest chiefs of staff, if not the youngest, uh, before uh, his assistant, Richard Cheney, took his place, uh, and then the youngest Secretary of Defense. He has that distinction of being the youngest and the oldest Secretary of Defense. First time around for Ford, and of course, second time around for George W. Bush. He wrote, like, 20,000 memos? <laughs> they were called snowflakes, because there were so many of them. Probably and they were more, on white paper. Probably more than 20,000. I want to turn back to the film, Unknown How about known. a lot? We'll call them, he wrote a lot. <laughs> Donald Rumsfeld talking about those memos that he wrote on Iraq. If you look at the range of my memos, there might be one-tenth of one percent about Iraq. The reason I was concerned about Iraq is because four-star generals would come to me and say, Mr. Secretary, we have a problem. Our orders are to fly over the northern part of Iraq and the southern part of Iraq on a daily basis with the Brits, and we are getting shot at at some moment. Could be tomorrow, could be next month, could be next year. One of our planes is going to be shot down, and our pilots and crews are going to be killed or they're going to be captured. The question will be, what in the world were we flying those flights for? What was the cost-benefit ratio? What was our country gaining? So you sit down and you say, I think I'm going to see if I can get the president's attention. Remind him that our planes are being shot at. Remind him that we don't have a fresh policy for Iraq. And remind him that we've got a whole range of options. Not an obsession a very 
measured, nuanced approach 